How are you, sir? I'm doing well, and you? I'm very well, we thank yeah. God. It's good to have you here once again. Thank you so much. How has the year been for you so far? Uh, it's been wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and now we are in February, we are moving I to the Glory to God. Yeah. Uh, living in Glory, part one. So we're just going to be just discussing a bit about this topic. Maybe before we start, let us pray. King of Glory, we thank you. We adore your holy name. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask, O oh Lord, that you show us revelations and mysteries from your word today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of this, we will live in glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And show forth your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The memory verse, Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Is risen upon you, is risen upon me. How would you define glory? I mean, that you usually says it's the opposite of shame. I mean, defining it with that opposite word. So how mm. would you define glory? Ah, I think the simplest definition you can give is the opposite of shame. Because glory cannot be easily defined. You're talking about splendor, you're talking about beauty, you're talking about power, you're talking about uh, 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 something that is radiant, you're talking about something that you cannot even, you know, the experience you cannot even express. Mm -hmm. I let me just put it that way. One of those words that yes, you that you cannot. Cover. And the best thing you can even do is just say the opposite of shame. That's just the simplest definition of it. Yes. And looking at the memory verse you spoke about, arise, shine, for the light That's is come, come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So by the time you get to verse 2 of that particular chapter 2, he said, uh, darkness shall cover the face of the earth, even the deep, and the Lord shall rise upon thee. That confirms that the glory we are talking about is God himself. So glory is one of the attributes of the Father. Glory is one of the attributes of God. So there is no way you talk about glory without talking about God. Yes, and there's no way you yes. talk about God without talking about glory. So when God appears, when you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah was saying the year that King Uzziah died, I saw mm. the Lord. And the next thing he said was, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. So version is the train fill yes. the temple, which is glory. So it fill the temple. So when God appears, glory appears. That's just it. All of it appears. Glory. That is just it. Then he went on to say something about a glorious life. Mm. I mean, he mentioned glory mm -hmm. associating it with God. So I would like to say a glorious life also would be associated with God. But what would you say, sir? Yes, definitely a glorious life will be associated with God. We find that in verse 2 of Isaiah chapter 6, he said, and the Lord will rise upon thee. So the Lord will come upon thee, which means the glory, God is the glory himself. Yes, yes. You know, with God, there is no shame. The God of the thing he has come is to wipe away our shame yes, away. Yes. Now going back to Genesis chapter 3, right from the beginning, when he created man, he didn't create clothes for them. You know why? The glory was upon them. Mm. When a man is sitting in glory, you don't see shame. You don't see his nakedness. You don't see sickness in his life. You know, that was what we lost. It does not appear as if they have lost something. Anything. But yes. they, they were seeing themselves before and they were not ashamed. You know what happened? When the glory departed, they began to cover themselves. Mm. Shame came. So where glory is absent, shame is present. Mm. So what now happened was that Jesus, the Father appeared. He, since they have lost the glory, yes. he was doing everything to restore him back to us. That was all he was trying to do. Now, he has to kill animals, to shed blood, to do this. At the time, all those things were still restoring the glory back. Yes. So what happened? He has to come and die by himself. Because we have all seen and we have come short of the glory of the Lord. And that is the book of uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. This is the glory God has come to restore. And by the time you get to Hebrew, he's talking about God being our high priest who have entered the holies of holies once and for all. He bore his, his own blood in his hand. He doesn't have to go every year like the priest always go. You know what? He, he wants to restore glory to man. So associating with God is associating with glory. So in God, there is no sickness. So sickness is not a glory to God. Poverty is not a glory no to way, God. No so way. that is now taking us to that book of Mark 5, 25 to 34, which is the Bible reading, Mark yes. 5, 25 to 34. That is talking about the woman with the issue of blood who came to be associated with the Father and he touched Jesus Christ. And the shame she has been bearing all the while was replaced with the glory of God. So the glory of God came out. See, you can't be connected with God and you are connected with shame. 
Mm. You can't be connected with God and you are connected with depression. See, you can't be connected with God and you are connected with damnation. You What's cannot be connected with God and you are con can be connected with condemnation. Romans chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation, condemnation. to them who are in the Lord. So yes. when you are connected with God, there is always exchange. And you know that he said, what that exchange is? Exchange of your shame for his glory. You know what the Bible says? He became poor so that we can become rich. So poverty is not a glory. Yes. So you don't have to. <laughs> Third John verse 2, you know what he said? I, I wish you above all things that thou may yes prosper. I mean, they God, I so prosper. So the open heaven is trying to say that, come, when you are talking about the glory of God, you are talking about the power of God, you are talking about the beauty of God. So Splendor. it is just God. So glory is God himself. Some things may look like glory, but they are not the glory in itself. Hmm. They may appear as if they look like glory, but they are not glory in itself. Any light that is not in Christ, it may look as if you are enjoying it, but that is not glory. See, one of the things we enjoy when we come to the Father is the peace of mind. That is a splendor, that is a glory of its own that shines, that makes you to shine even in the midst of storm. So when you come to Christ and you are associated with the Father, your lineage has been changed in an exchange. You are now connected with God. So how on earth will I die at the age of 40 when they say that is the age they die in their family? Because I am connected with the life eternal himself. Hmm? How on earth will I be poor? Because I am connected with the one who has power to make wealth. Romans, I mean, the Romans chapter 8 verse 18. So I am connected with him. How will I be connected with God and I will live in the darkness? John chapter 8 verse 12. I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness. Darkness, darkness is a shame and not a glory. But he says, shall have the light of life. I will like be connected with God and I will be thirsty and there will be nothing to quench my thirst. There's no way. John chapter 7, 37, he said, come unto me. He said, he stand and he said, the last day, he said, many man is thirsty. Let him come unto me and drink. So there is a glory in God. So we live in his glory if we are connected with the Father. Look at it. The absence of the Father signified absence of glory. And, and the absence of glory is the presence of shame. Is the presence right. of shame. So that's just so that the equation is pretty much simple. <laughs> I mean, first of all, yeah, I mean, as a mathematician, mathematician yeah. myself, I yeah. mean, first of all, I mean, there's the exchange, yes, and then there's the connection. Yes, connection. If you're yeah. connected with God, you're mm -hmm. connected with glory. Yes. So that means I can draw from my conclusion and say that mm -hmm. if I'm living in glory, mm -hmm. it means I should live in God. I should live in God. It means I am connected I, to I, God. I, yes. So seeing a glory in one's life, you should go and check the source, and that is God. You know what he missed in the life of Adam and Eve was God. Since God, see, you cannot disconnect yourself from God and be assessing what belongs to God. No, it's impossible. <laughs> so connection with God will make the things of God to flow into your life. See, some things are bad, right? When you are battered of the Father, then you can now claim what belongs to the Father. They are bad, right? So because they will be disconnected from the one who gave birth to them, the glory cannot continue to flow. Sir, some people used to hear God in the past. That was glory because they were connected with God. But when there was this connectivity, they weren't hearing God. That is a shame. Remember the life of Saul. Saul who used to be a man of God, used to be with God, suddenly he found himself. He was prophesying. He was prophesying at prophesying, the beginning. Yes. Look at how degrading he was looking to burn for Nicomisa, for them to now hear from him, for him, all those things. That is shame. I think what I should establish is that as one can exchange his glory and his shame for glory, so also one can exchange glory for shame. So one must do everything to connect with God, to assess the glory and to retain the glory. So you must assess, I must assess the glory <laughs> Definitely and I must retain that glory. Must be retained. And daddy mentioned and said something about the prayer point, Father, please let your glory fill me, mm. turn my shame to glory, to glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please pray for us as we Lord, we thank you because you are God of glory and we thank you for bringing us into you. And for everyone who are yet to come into this glory, we ask that you will bring them in in the name of Jesus. Turn our shame to glory. Help us to retain it. Don't let us lose this glory even till we see you in glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I wish I would have quoted 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You know what it says here? But we all with open face, we are beholding him as in the mirror. You know what happened? And we are transformed into the yes. same image from glory to glory. glory. Hallelujah. I mean, this conversation has been enlightening. Living in glory. Amen. May we live in glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for your time. Thank you so Very much. Good.